Today, we are uh, doing a sun salutation. And sun salutation is actually what um, like vinyasa and flow classes and even ashtanga classes is, in, is based on. And uh, a sun salutation was not a part of yoga till about 1930 when some uh, yoga teachers in Mysore, India, uh, started experimenting with different things in their practice and they started incorporating the sun salutation. But the sun salutation itself is like millennia old and it was up until then kind of a spiritual practice. So like just the average person, a householder in the morning when the sun came up, he would do a sun salutation or people have pre pilgrimage would do sun salutations. So we're gonna go through the first side of it really slow and I'm gonna break it down piece by piece so you can kind of make sure you learn what you really are supposed to be doing and what you're feeling. And then the second side, hopefully if I don't talk too long, we'll be able to do it a little faster. So we're gonna start out standing at the front of our mat and you're gonna stand in what's called mountain pose. And mountain pose, um, you can either have your feet together or if you're a little more comfortable with your balance to have your feet slightly apart, that's fine. And your arms just reach down, you stand nice and tall. And this is just a good kind of starter pose for a lot of things, it's called Tadasana. So we're going to begin in Tadasana on our mat. And the first thing I want you to do, we're gonna inhale and exhale, and you're gonna place your hands in prayer position. So your thumbs rest on your breastbone, on your sternum. And now I want you to inhale and lift your arms straight up. And if you wish, you can arch your back. So you tighten your butt muscles and push your hips forward to keep this safe. You don't wanna bend in your low back, you wanna make a nice arc. So we're bending ourselves back into an arch. Now we're going to forward fold and we're going to do it with a flat back. So it's kind of swan dive your arms down and we're going to come over into a forward fold here. And keep your legs straight for a moment to get that nice little stretch. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you're tight, you can not come way down, that's fine. I can come down pretty far. And now from here, you can now bend your knees and you're going to place your hands on either side of your feet. And we're going to step that right foot back, coming into basically a runner's lunge. So stepping that right foot back and make adjustments here so that your knee is over your ankle. So you don't want to be way out ahead here. So find that spot and we're going to do our nice little happy psoas stretch. So you're going to lift your gaze and keep your back leg straight and start to press the hips towards the floor and get that nice groin stretch that makes our back feel really good. And now we're going to step the other leg back to meet. So the left foot's coming back to meet the right and we're coming into a plank position. And plank position, a lot of times, you know, people have their butt up in the air, it's hanging down. We wanna line up all of the back of the head, the shoulders, the butt, and the heels in a nice straight line. It's not always easy to do. So if I were to lay a board on your back, it would be touching all those parts. And one other thing that I want to teach you about here is what to do with your arms. So my uh, a younger teacher calls it scrubbing. So when you have your hands weighted, you want to feel as though you're trying to turn your hand out but because it's plastered to the floor, it can't turn, but your arm turns and your shoulder turns. And that puts your body in a much safer position. So your elbows are almost pointing towards your um, feet. So when I tell you to scrub your hands, you're making that arm movement with your shoulders and your elbows. So here we are, we're in our little plank, we're hanging out. We're scrubbing, so we have our arms in a good position. And now we're going to do an interesting pose. So in typical vinyasa classes, they come into what's called chaturanga, which is named for four points on the floor. 
and you come down halfway, kind of a little uh, push up, and then come on down to the floor. But in a traditional sun salutation, they actually do a different move called Ashtananga. And I just this morning saw it listed online as the new Chaturanga if you're in your vinyasa class. So I guess they started adding it to vinyasa. Although when I was trained in teacher training, this is what we did. So here we are in our plank. You're going to drop your knees. And now you're going to bring your chest and your chin down to the floor. So you have eight parts of your body touching the floor. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of flexibility to be able to do this. So it's a different type of movement, but it is a good effort for flexibility. Now we're going to slide forward onto our belly. Yes. Thank goodness. And now here's where there's two poses that people confuse a lot. <laughs> we're going to do a cobra. That would be in the traditional one. But in a, a vinyasa class, it will, they would do an up dog. And there are two different moves, and people confuse them all the time. Cobra pose is one of the most ancient poses. So cobra pose, your fingertips line up with the top of your shoulder right against your rib cage. You're going to tighten up your butt, and you're going to start to press yourself up. But your hips and your legs stay on the floor. That's a big difference here. So you really feel this in your tricep, the back of your arm. You're pushing yourself up, and you know, depending on your strength, you might want to be able to go a little bit. But this is our cobra pose. Now, in a vinyasa class, a lot of times they do the up dog. Up dog, your, leg, your arms are all the way up. And you're almost the weight now, instead of your triceps doing the work, it's like on the bone and the joint supporting you. You want to keep those shoulders in that scrub position. And just your hands and the top of your feet are resting. And your body's kind of hanging like a little hammock. And that's the difference between those two. So sometimes the teacher will tell you to do one or the other. Now you know the difference. All right. So now we're going to do down dog. So tuck your toes under. And this is another one that people really struggle with. And I want you to lift your hips. And here's where we're going to learn how to do down dog the right way. So a lot of people will be like I am right now. So my shoulders are kind of bent. And they, they focus on their legs stretching. What you really want to focus is on your torso down to your fingertips. So it should be a long line. I usually tell people to really bend their knees so that they can get into this extended position. You want your chest to be coming down towards the floor. As you get better flexibility, you'll be able to straighten your legs more. But really focus on that line from your hip all the way down to your fingertips. And it's actually more comfortable this way. So it's a good thing. So here we are in our little down dog. And now we're going to step that right foot back forward between your hands. And I don't care how you get it there. If you have to put a knee down to be able to do it, if you've got to take your hand and lift it or take a bunch of steps, but we're going to get back into a runner's lunge. So this time, the other hip is getting the stretch. Tucking your ankle is under your knee. Again, let those hips drop down and get that wonderful little stretch. And then you're going to step that left foot forward to meet the right. We're back in our forward fold. Now, engage your butt and your legs here. We're going to lift our body up in a flat back. It's almost like doing good mornings when you're doing weightlifting. So we're going to do our little reverse swan dive up. Hands together. We're going to do our arch back again if that's in your practice. Tighten those butt muscles if you do that. And release. And that's half of our sun salutation. So now let's do the other side. We're just going to go through the other side. 
I'm not going to do all the stop and explaining. I may give you some little cues. We'll see what it feels more like when you're doing it at a, a normal pace. Now, when we did it at uh, the ashram, when I did my teacher training, we did 12 rounds of it, both sides, and just kept going faster and faster and faster. <coughs> so let's do our other side, the left side. So you're in mountain pose, inhaling, exhaling, hands to the heart center, arms up, arching back with those tight butt muscles, forward, fold down, let that little stretch happen. Hands plant on either side of your feet. Now you're gonna step back with that left leg. We're in our lunge here, our runner's lunge. Let that hip area stretch. And now we're gonna step back to our plank pose. So that right foot back to meet the left. Get that nice scrubbing with your shoulders. Nice line here. Now we're gonna do that Ashtanga, that eight points on the floor. So knees, chest, and chin come down. Now we're coming forward, pressing up into cobra. And you're going to tuck your toes now and come back to your downward facing dog. So remember, it's all about the upper body, not the legs here. We want this nice stretch. You can still do that scrubbing with your arms. Now we're going to step that left foot forward. So bringing that left foot forward, again, if you gotta, you know, give yourself some hope, go for it, it's all good. Let those hips kind of sink down again in that runner's lunge, getting that nice release through your groin up into your low back. Now you're gonna step that right foot forward. We are back in our forward fold. Give yourself that little moment to get that nice little stretch. Now engage your butt muscles and engage your legs. And we're gonna lift up, nice and tall, bringing those arms together, reaching those hips forward while you press with those nice contracted glutes and release. So that is one round of a sun salutation. And again, as I said, this is kind of that basis for all those vinyasa classes. But then they start doing variations on it. So sometimes instead of doing the, the lunge like we did here, they might be up, either in a prayer pose or all the way up. And you get certain twists and turns and things like that. They just kind of make that whole hour usually of a vinyasa class go a little faster than it would if you just were doing the basic sun salutations. Although you can certainly get a really, really good warm up in Shivananda, which is, as I said, where my teacher training was, their basic class is an hour and a half. And they did 12 rounds of this sun salutation as kind of your warm up. So get the blood flowing and get things moving. And that was how that particular part of the um, use was for sun salutations. And that's why they did the more traditional sun salutation that I just showed you. But all those differences, another quickie, just if you want something to practice getting that down dog is to do puppy. So you're on your knees and you just stretch yourself out that same way in down dog, but you don't have to worry about your legs. If you start to get the muscle memory of what your body's supposed to feel like, that's a great way to kind of practice to help you get that down dog. Because down dog is probably one of the most uh, frequently, uh, maybe kind of struggled for a lot of people. And hopefully, we got our class in. I'm not sure my time. How am I doing? Pretty good, I think. It's always fun to try to figure out my timing. Tomorrow, we're going to do balancing poses. So you're going to get to watch me struggle because I don't have very good balance. <laughs> but that's okay. We all have our areas where you do well at, and then we have our struggle areas. And that's just because we're human. Thank you.